Hi, I'm Nate Moore. Welcome back to another one of our videos on pivot tables. I have new data for us today. We did the first 10 lessons with new patient data. And what we have today is some sample receivables data with um, a bunch of, again, random numbers and things to look at receivables. But in our, in our sample data, we have $5 million of receivables coming from five different clinics and six physicians. You can tell these are random numbers. Um, the due from, I've got one, two, three, four, five insurance companies and a patient balance. This PSTP field, what I like to do is look at whether the receivables are due from the primary insurance, the secondary, the tertiary insurance, or the patient. And that helps me value how much I can expect to get out of the receivables, especially if you re record your receivables at a gross build charge and there's going to be a contractual allowance for your in, uh, any insurance write-offs. So given that, what I want to do is kind of follow up on last time's lesson and look at adding more data to pivot table fields. So here we are, and it's helpful to see these uh, insurance balances, age 0 to 30, 31 to 60, over 120 days. Another thing that I do when I'm evaluating receivables is I want to know not just the dollar amount, but how many claims. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Very similar to what we did last time. Right now, if you look in this corner, we have the balance field and we've summed it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the balance field down here and again it's the very same thing the only difference is one's formatted and one's not and what we're going to do this time is we're going to click over here value field settings and we're going to count. Let's make sure the number format is the way we want it. We don't need any decimal places and we'll use a comma and click OK and again I don't need the balance too so I'm just going to put count of claims and click OK and now let's move this out of the way so now you can see I have the sum of the dollar amount of my claims and I've still got the five million dollars that I had before but now I can tell you how many claims there are so there are thousand claims here down to 931 claims at the Kona location so again I can go back and when I'm evaluating accounts receivable, look at not just the dollar amount of claims, but how many claims are making up that amount. Sometimes it's a little bit uh, confusing to see the way that Excel does this, and you may find it helpful to move this sum of values field right here. Let me show you what it looks like both places. See how when I drag it over here, the multiple data fields that are here are in the columns, whereas if I drag it down here, now it's in the rows. I've got the sum of the, the accounts receivable balance and the count of the claims. So by moving this back and forth, depending on the way you're using it, it may be helpful to sometimes have it in the columns, sometimes have it in the rows. And it's a quick and easy way to get more data or more information out of the same set of data. Hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching.